So in the video yesterday, we talked about how many satellites there were in orbit around our planet, and you may have learned about how much stuff there actually already is. What I didn't really discuss um, is how much junk there is as well. Now, that's a completely different story, because in comparison to the actual number of satellites, the amount of so-called space debris, or I guess in some sense space junk, is absolutely mind-blowing. According to recent observations by NASA, there are close to about 30,000 pieces that are about uh, a few inches or about 10 centimeters in size. And even more so, smaller pieces. As a matter of fact, the estimates for tiny pieces uh, less than one centimeter are close to about 150 million. That is a lot of stuff orbiting around the planet. And of course, it creates a lot of dangers for the actually active spacecraft and satellites that are currently there, including the International Space Station. And today I actually wanted to discuss uh, what happened back in 2009 when it finally happened. Two satellites actually collided with one another at a really, really high speed of 11,700 meters per second, creating quite a huge explosion and lots and lots of debris. Now, uh, this particular satellite, or I guess these two satellites, were from two different countries. And um, ironically, one was from the US and one was from Russia. Now, the American satellite is actually part of the Iridium network, and you can actually track every uh, debris from that collision right here in Stuff in Space. And there you go. This is the currently um, actively tracked debris from this particular collision. And as you can see, there is a lot of stuff out there. When it just happened, uh, the uh, actual number was close to about 2,000. In the last few years, some of the debris actually returned to the planet, so now it's um, just under 1,000. But there are still a lot of little pieces that we're not really tracking anymore or can track because they're so tiny. When I say little, I mean like this big. And a piece this big, traveling at anywhere from 8 to 9 kilometers per second, can actually pretty much destroy any spacecraft, like literally almost instantly. So let's talk a little bit more about what actually happened. Uh, this is the Iridium network. It's the uh, most popular, most active telecommunications network in the US. And um, one of these satellites, Iridium-33, collided with the uh, no longer active Russian military satellite. And as you can see, both of them were traveling really fast and it was a direct collision, almost direct, there is, uh, about 90 degree collision. And the amount of debris that was generated because of this, this actual angle was ridiculous. And as a matter of fact, um, it endangered quite a lot of other satellites. Luckily, nothing really happened. And at some point back in 2012, it even endangered the International Space Station because of one pieces that came relatively close. Now, Iridium network is still pretty active. There's uh, still 66 satellites that are used uh, regularly, and this particular satellite was also still working. However, the Russian satellite that you see right there was uh, inactive for about 12 years. It was a military satellite that only worked for two years, and it was then disabled and became uh, space debris. Um, for 12 years, nobody really knew where it was, but the approximate location was known. Prior to the actual collision, the Iridium network actually did receive a warning, but it said that the actual uh, passage of two satellites would be about 500 meters apart. Which actually uh, brings up a really excellent point. Um, the amount of satellites out there and the actual precision in tracking them is still much, much lower and, and not as precise as it really should be. According to the Iridium network uh, executives, the uh, amount of actual warnings they get per week is close to about 400. In other words, every satellite that they have of their 66 satellites um, is in danger of colliding pretty much every week. And when I say in danger, it means that they pass other objects or other satellites within about five kilometers. In other words, the precision of tracking the objects and the amount of objects out there means that at this point, it's sort of a lottery. We're not really sure if one of the collisions might happen again, and we weren't even sure that this was going to happen. I mean, it was actually supposed to be much farther away than it really was. And just to give you a bit of a perspective on how much energy was generated here, um, well, this is an approximate amount, but if you were to convert this to uh, basically TNT exploding, Here's what 100 tons of TNT looks like. This is during the Trinity test, and here's an actual explosion of, the, of that 100 tons. Um, this is, of course, when uh, the US was developing the nuclear weapons. In other words, this right here produces this much of an explosion. The collision between these two satellites produced about one-fifth of that. So that's a lot of energy. That's basically like 20 tons of TNT 
exploding right there in space and producing a tremendous amount of debris. And um, when it comes to the actual uh, reasons for this happening, and I guess um, essentially how to avoid this in the future, the biggest problem here was that, well, first of all, Russia was not really communicating with um, other nations on the exact locations of the military satellites. And of course, that's kind of obvious because they're military satellites. But at the same time, um, US regularly tracks them actually very precisely. But in this specific case, the actual tracking was no longer as accurate because the satellite was not really uh, functioning anymore. So so there was no real priority of tracking the satellite, but the debris itself um, is still technically as dangerous as the satellite itself. But we of course have actually been predicting this happening for a very, very long time. As a matter of fact, the idea um, that is actually known as Kessler syndrome is that um, when one collision occurs, it produces a lot of debris that is then uh, sort of exponentially growth as each of these pieces collides with another satellite. And this is the premise for gravity and the main storyline here starts with uh, essentially satellites colliding and destroying the International Space Station and putting Sandra Bullock in this relatively uncomfortable situation. However, unfortunately, even though this particular collision occurred, um, there haven't really been many advances in terms of actual regulations and laws to prevent this from happening in the future. One major regulation is that uh, many satellites are now required uh, to actually try to position themselves in the so-called graveyard orbit that's right above the um, geostationary orbit right here. It's the orbit right above it. However, not all satellites are capable of doing this and also uh, pretty much none of the major nations are enforced to do so. I believe only France actually uh, made the law or made the regulation for all of the future launches to actually have some kind of a provision for a satellite to dispose of itself. But France doesn't launch that many satellites and so it's not really going to uh, save us from future collisions. And if you watched the video yesterday, I also talked about how uh, in the last um, 10 or so years we've actually launched about 25% of all of the satellites ever. And uh, the actual number of satellites is increasing every single year and we're becoming really good at it. And only some satellites are designed to return back to the atmosphere and basically dispose of themselves. The majority of satellites that are launched um, don't have those provisions just yet. At least they're not required to by law because there is really no law just yet. And so to avoid uh, collisions like this that generate a tremendous amount of debris like you see right here, we do need to have these laws, we need to have these regulations, and the space industry needs to actually come up with international laws that enforce this. We need to enforce uh, debris from being a problem. Now, there was another event that actually generated quite a lot of debris as well. This was um, a weapon testing by China back in 2007 when they actually decided to destroy one of their own satellites using um, military grade rockets and that also generated a lot of debris. So this was kind of also not a good thing to do because now a lot of satellites at this particular altitude of about 850 kilometers are also in danger of getting hit by pieces of something. So that's actually the amount of debris there is between the altitudes of 600 and 1000 kilometers. And for the most part, um, we actually have more chance of colliding with debris now than we do with micrometeorites. As a matter of fact, there's almost no danger of having micrometeorites here, but there's a lot of danger of being hit by a piece of leftover from a satellite. And uh, specifically, the biggest amount of stuff out there right now is not even satellite pieces. It's actually things like paint from satellites, and also uh, leftover pieces or specifically frozen pieces of rocket fuel or rocket coolants. And a lot of them generate ice flakes or basically ice pieces that could be as big as this and travel ridiculously fast as well and collide with other things in space. So considering that the space launches are going to only increase in number, we definitely need to all come together and basically come up with some sort of a regulation that everybody has to abide by. Because as the number of launches increases, as we get more and more entrepreneurs or private companies like SpaceX uh, launching things pretty much regularly, we actually need to have an international regulation that will prevent um, anything like in the movie Gravity from happening. Kessler syndrome or Kessler effect that I actually discussed in one of the videos you can find um, above. I believe it was actually one of the first videos I made on the channel when I started actively producing space videos. But anyway, so this particular phenomenon is going to become a huge problem as the number of satellites increases. 
And so in order for us to avoid another Iridium Cosmos uh, collision that you see right here that generated a tremendous amount of energy, we definitely need to have uh, not just binding agreements, but also better tracking systems. And most importantly, um, possibly even companies or uh, organizations regularly tracking uh, the debris, regularly finding ways to remove debris from space and uh, basically making sure that everybody agrees to these regulations. If one of these satellites collides again, it's very likely that the actual Kessler syndrome will become a reality and we might end up with something like in the movie Gravity. And so if one day your smartphone stops working and you don't really get any reception on TV, you know that uh, something probably went wrong up there in space and uh, it's very likely that a lot of things are going to shut down pretty much instantly. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you learned something from this video and now you know a little bit more about this unfortunate collision from uh, 2009. And if you want to learn more about space sciences or sciences in general, make sure to subscribe to this channel and maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences through simulations and video games. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. And space out and as always, bye bye.